Hey there viewers, Eric O here, South Main Auto. Welcome back and welcome to our channel. Got a new fix, well, hopefully a fix. We've got a new diagnosis, how's that? Got this 06 F-150 that got towed in today and it was towed in from another shop. They looked at it and couldn't make any headway with it. So they dumped it on me like they usually do. And it's our turn to have a look at it and see what's going on and see if we can't get this thing fixed. All I know right now, it is a no start, no crank, and no communications according to the other shop. They said they uh, go to plug their little code reader in it or whatever they were using and, and couldn't get any codes, couldn't communicate with the engine. So they said, send it Derek. Here we are. Let's plug in our Varus, verify what they've done and maybe their complaint and see what we got. That's always a good thing. And, uh, I just had the tow truck guy just dump it inside here. Save me from pushing. Jeez, I got this thing in about as many knots as you can get it. Alright. Now. Well, we got nothing there. Well, everything looks normal on the inside. I don't, uh, I mean, as far as gauges and all that stuff goes, like I said, we've got power at the data link connector. Um, you know, no crank, no click, no nothing. I don't even hear the fuel pump, so. Let's pull codes or see if we don't have any communications and uh, kind of see if we can troubleshoot this down from there. Sometimes, I don't know what your habit is with no crank, no start, but you know, sometimes it's mine just to it's kind of give things to look over. Some sometimes, I mean, I don't know. It's not too often you get cars that are, you know, no start, no crank, and you know, don't do anything, no clicking, no nothing. Sometimes it's pretty obvious. I mean, you know, you could pop the hood and see somebody put a battery in it, and you know, neglected to hook up a single wire or something as simple as that. So I'm just gonna poke around here under the hood real quick, get the scan tool fired up, and uh, go from there. All right, well, I got the information put in there, so let's uh, just go ahead and do a code scan here and see what comes up if anything and uh, see if this gives us any clue or maybe we just got to go right to the to the starter circuit but I doubt that because the shop that dropped it off said that they tried to jump the starter with the key on and they didn't get any get any words with that so I doubt it's something in the starter circuit oh gosh solar pads module bus fall it looks like we got a pretty repetitious code here. The U1900 uh, uh, has a problem with the high speed can. Must fall, must fall. Yep, and that, um, that is also part of the uh, communication there in that driver's seat module. But you know what I don't see here? I don't see anything here for the uh, for the PCM. Usually, this will dip, indicate whether or not it has um, you know zero codes in a module. So it's obviously having a, a communication issue here. Which, if we have a you know a dead module, then certainly will have. So let's uh, I guess before we get too excited about this and chasing down a uh, a fault on the uh, network let's just uh see if we can communicate because this is i think where they had issues let's see if we can pull codes out of the engine controller here yeah see so this is probably what they were doing 
Uh, so there's no communications with the engine controller, and that's part of the CAN system. Let's just check. Uh, I'm just going to go through. Uh, I guess if we can read data. I'm just going to go through and check all these other modules that are part of the high speed network here. I think PATS, isn't that part of the. I think that's part of the PCM, isn't it? On a Ford. Yeah, so there's no communication with the PATS. No communication with the engine controller. So I think the instrument cluster, that's all. Let's see if this is toast. No, instrument cluster we can communicate with. Well, it did. It pulled the code out of the driver's seat module, so I'm sure that can communicate. So that's good. Where were we? Security module. Hate to bore you guys with just flicking through all these modules, but I think this is our best bet to see what what doesn't work. Which which modules down? Transmission, that's part of the PCM, I believe, right? Yeah, okay, so this is starting to... Uh, I mean, I'm probably way wrong. You guys probably got a... There's probably a couple Ford techs out here. What do we want to look at? Component data. Probably laughing at me right now. <laughs> All right, so we've got airbag. So, so far, what we don't have is we don't have transmission, we don't have engine, we don't have PATS, but I believe they are all in the PCM. I'm gonna have to look to double check, but I think that's how I think that's how them these work. It's probably not even called the PCM. I just use generic language. Automatic temp control, where are we at? We only got two left parking aid, that's kind of I don't know. Sometimes it's easier to find out what you do know than it is what you don't know. If that makes sense. And then last but not least, we've got our transfer case module. Alright. So. We have a bunch of codes for communication error. Um, and then we don't have an engine, transmission, or PATS. They are the three that are not communicating currently. I'm going to take a little poke here and make sure that all three of those modules, I believe, let me show you what I think. I believe they all go through what I would consider the PCM or the engine controller, or, you know, whatever Ford calls it nowadays. I think that handles all three functions there. So starting to make a little sense. I know this is kind of a cheesy way of doing it here, but, um, so these have two anti-theft circuits. So you've got your your forced, what do they call it? A forced entry circuit. So I think that's like your body security. So that is a separate module, the body security module, but it also is separate when we were looking at it. They called it the vehicle security module. Um, so this is what we want. This is what's dead on this, is this passive anti-theft. And that runs, yeah, right here. So. Uh, yeah, so that communicates through, that is the PCM. Oh, look, I even have my terminology right. Uh, so yeah, the, the PCM. So that's part of the PCM. Um, let's, uh, oops, quit doing that. Let's uh, take a look at, well, obviously we know the engine controller, which uh, is, is the PCM. And then the transmission, I don't believe, has a separate uh, TCM. So it's the four-wheel drive circuit, four-wheel drive circuit, four-wheel drive circuit. Well, it's got to be on here somewhere. So here we go. Automatic transmission. And right there is our proof. Yep. So that is part of... I get a little click happy here. Yep. That also is a PCM. So that confirms all of that noise. All right. Um, I don't know what to, what to say. Uh, what I would say, or I guess my thought, I get kind of under the gun on these, like diagnosis, live diagnosis ones, because sometimes I'll I'll poke around a little bit, I'll do a little, I'll do a little reading, I'll do 
like just kind of my own thought like I say just kind of gather my thoughts as far as what I know you know as opposed to all right let's whip out a flow chart and you know 57 steps later you're like ripping out your hair and, um, so what I would say we got uh, you know engine trainee pats nothing's communicating um, it's you know it's throwing throwing these codes because it's not seeing this module on the network I can only assume or the you know the wires are shorter than maybe the PCM's fried I don't know I don't know if the, what even the story is behind this truck other than this isn't my normal customer and and they had it at another shop and the other shop you know towed it here uh, what I would do if it were me and it is um, why don't we look on a wire diagram let's see what powers the PCM just kind of see if we got some of our basics we'll start with the basics because that usually uh, can get you out of a jam alarm and sometimes that's the best place to start is power and ground is the module getting power if it is then we'll kind of go from there and we'll check out the, um, uh, the communication lines there I think with these high-speed cans I think you can diagnose them at the data link connector to see if any modules are shorted I don't I don't know I work on so much different stuff it's hard to keep track of what's what but let's start with that first start with the basics fuses things of that nature it's pulp diagram all right let's look at a look at a wire diagram for the engine control module here this is a 5.4 liter and I think that might be what we need right on the first page let me zoom in here so hopefully everybody can see. Let's see what we have. So we have a central junction box near the right A pillar. So that's going to be inside the vehicle. And then it appears that we have a PCM power relay, which turns on a bunch of fuses, which feed a bunch of stuff, probably. Um, what controls this relay? So we got a hot at all times, a fuse number 12 goes into a relay. And that comes down here and I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not but it has a ground here on the PCM which is right where was it number 40 pin number 40 is a ground grounds relay turning it on providing power to all of that stuff let's just see out of curiosity I don't know how to turn on my highlighting tool let's see where that goes that goes over here and that feeds three of the powers on that violet wire so well you know what instead of chasing down where all these wires go let's just grab a test light the old scope on a rope and see let me grab a piece of paper here well i print this out but then i gotta go in the office so we got fuse number 12 34 33 and 32 and a power relay now because ford is awesome I didn't just say that out loud. It was a sarcastic remark. We need to find a fuse box identification because they don't tend to label anything. Uh, fuses, circuit breakers, identification, central junction box. Wow, look at that thing. Oh, what do we got? PCM power relay, so. That is right there in the top right hand corner. Well, let's uh, let's go grab uh, grab this thing. See if they are labeled in the box. If they, because otherwise I'm not. I'm gonna have to print this out. Let's go. Uh, let's go see if we can find this thing first, and then we'll go from there. And it says. Yeah, let me just take that right out. <sighs> A clean car. Fuses, see owner's manual. Oh, we got another cover here. Pull, it says pull. It's like a grenade. Jeez. Okay. Uh, oh, cool. Well, this is this is labeled so let's take this back over to the computer I think if I remember right in the diagram that one there 
is our relay, but let's go over and uh, let me go grab my piece of paper that I wrote this down on, and I'll grab a test light too. Get the key turned on. I got my paper. That is the relay up there, the PCM relay. But we got to check fuse number 12. That was the one feeding the relay. Keys on. So let's find the good ground. Now I've got like a $400 power probe hook, but I still always like my test light. You know, for stuff like this, it doesn't matter. Fuse number 12. Let's see if this lines up. I'll get you. Fuse number 12. This is going to be a thing. A little 5 amper over here. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if you can see it in the. Can you? Yeah. So fuse number 12 is good. And then out of the. They put this in a really convenient spot. I mean, I'm not a Chevy guy, but boy, under the hood is a whole lot nicer. 32, 33, and 34. Man, this goes up. Uh, there we go. Oh, that's 31. Got to be in the right neighborhood. Is this a joke? Oh, they're there. They're way at the top. 32. I'll just check those real quick. If we got power here. We'll go out under the hood and, and just verify it at the PCM. But this is the easiest place to get to. Yeah, real easy. Maybe easier to do it under the hood. Let's see, 32. Did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Did this thing start? Huh. Well, now it's dead again. I had power on that, uh... Let's see, so that's... So that's number 12. Number 12 has power. I don't know if you guys can see anything. So number 12 has power, but when I was checking 30... The output's on the relay, the, the fuel pump kicked on. Let me check my... Did it again. Sounds like this dude needs some manifolds. When I shut it off and I got nothing. Alright, let me look at this one more time. Let me bring you down here. I don't want the thunders going on, but let me see. So this fuse over here is number 12. This one feeds a relay. That one's good. So this is the one I keep checking. These are the outputs. See, that's dead now. That one's dead, that one's dead. Let me check this. Uh, man, this is really tight under here. I can't even see. Hang on. Uh, just a second. I don't know what you guys can see. I'm sorry, I usually don't do. I think I'm in that fuse. All right, well, we can see. Hopefully you can see. I really hope that's turning out good. So basically, we've got nothing coming out of that relay, and we've got going in. So either the PCM's providing the ground and kicking our relay on. Let's, uh, let me see if I can't prop the camera up here. I'm sorry for the poor footage. <laughs> okay. The camera's propped up. Warm. That's our relay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. You hear that? That relay's clicking, but look what I see. I may have just accidentally diagnosed it. Well, not accidentally, but look at that relay. I hope you guys can see that. It's got some green boogers on it. And there's a little green booger up there in the box. But this relay is clicking. I mean, that doesn't mean squat. I mean, that just means that it's clicking. It doesn't mean it's transferring power through the contacts. So let's, uh, what's this one do? Probably don't need it. I 
Ah, you hear that? Can you guys hear the fuel pump? I bet you it'll run. So, I don't know what this relay does, but we'll stick it back where it was. Let's see, that goes back in there. Here's our problem. We've got a bad relay. Now this is a great example, let me turn the key on. This is a great example that if a relay clicks, it does not mean that it's good. Because listen. That relay is clicking, it's being commanded on. It's not passing any power through it. But now we gotta look to see where did the corrosion start, in the box or in the relay? Well, I pulled the camera out for a second and I jammed my head up under here and I'm gonna try to, try to zoom in on this. But there's a little bit of green pus right there on the edge of the box. And you can't really see that terminal. Maybe you can just see the edge of the gray. But down inside there on the terminal and on the circuit board, it appears good, it appears knit. So it tells me that the corrosion is inside the relay. And I took and I popped a couple of those fuses out, that 10 amp and that 20 amp there, and it, they look good. I mean, it's not like it's full of corrosion. I don't, I don't understand this. Oh, that's in a mother lover of a spot to, to get in. I don't know what I was Ford thinking. Um, this thing needs some manifold. This thing stinks. And it was cool. We got it fixed in like no time flat. We didn't even have to look at anything. Well, I mean, other than some wiring diagrams and use their thinker. But look at that, uh, look at that relay. How does a relay just corrode? Usually the, this is not the proper way to do this, but let's, uh, have a little luck. Use our test light as a relay opener. It's like cracking open a crab, you know. It's junk anyways, right? So who cares if we break it? I just want to see if the contacts... Ha! Ah, look at that. Oh, let me, uh... This is probably the crappiest video I've done as far as quality shaking around. I hope you can see that. I hope that's focusing. So there is our contact on our relay. I really hope that's focusing. I'll just hold it still for a second in case it's not. So look at that. So it looks like the corrosion came from within. That's weird. Because like I say, to the, be the best that I can see inside that box, it's clean. Other than a little bit on the plastic, this uh, PCM power relay or engine control relay, whatever you want to call it, is just uh, is just corroded, and it's right on the contact side. So, because the I'll put a I'll put a link in the description in case you're unfamiliar with how a relay works and you're watching this video. Uh, there's a guy that I know that I watch his videos. I'll I'll email him and see if it's okay if I use one of his videos on how a relay works, and I'll put a little link to that. Maybe right here on this page, maybe in the description. So poke around, look for that. But look at that. I'm fascinated by that. That's cool. Not too often you run across a relay that that clicks. And uh, oops, sorry, sorry for the noise. Uh, that I'm just excited we found it so fast. That's awesome. It's not too often you find a relay that clicks that doesn't that doesn't transfer power. Um, you know, it's not impossible. I mean, right here, there's the proofs in the pudding. So we see it, got this thing running in like, in no time. If I wasn't recording, we had this thing running in like 10 minutes. Uh, that's really good. So, I don't know, maybe the other garage just uh, got intimidated by those uh, communication codes. But sometimes you just got to keep it simple. I mean, it can be intimidating. You pull codes on cars or U's and P's and elemental P's and C's and D's and... I don't know, there's so many different codes now, I work on so many different stinking cars. Sometimes you just keep it to the basics is what I figure. And then, you know, expand out from there. Find out what you know, we got power going and stuff. If we do, great, let's check out the, you know, high-speed controller network and all that hoopla. 
So let me uh, tell you this. Yeah, let me see if I can uh, locate a relay. All right, viewers, I got us a relay. Had to uh, get it through our local Ford supplier down in the Ford garage. Uh, they did not have one at Advance or Nap or anything. So we got this one, and it is, oddly enough, look at this. I don't know if it makes a difference, but it's a different color. It's not, um, you know, I already tore the back part. So there is the part number. If for some reason this is a common problem and you, and you need one. Um, it is a different color, so I don't know. Maybe they've changed it a little bit. Maybe they had some problems, some known problems, some corrosion problems, and they, they've got it solved with the black one. Uh, let's go install it. For, I'm going to grab some Q-tips and uh, a little bit of brake parts cleaner and kind of just swab out that little green piece of gobbly gook that's sitting there on the edge, and we'll stick this in. Come back, I'll hook a hose to it, whatever exhaust is going out the back, and re-scan uh, re it. I looked in there good again, and I do not see it inside the fuse box. Man, this guy is really fortunate because, like on the Dodges with the you know the integrated power module and crap under the hood, them things are a disaster. When they get the you know when they get the green boogers, there ain't no going back. So we'll put this in and uh, see if it uh, see if it works. Why wouldn't it? That baby's in. Now, before we put this cover on, let's. here it's even missing a down here on this quarter panel trim it's even missing an ear so maybe this ain't her first rodeo that was just sitting let me get all my broken pieces went in that tore this thing apart like a caveman got our scope on a rope back over by the uh, scanner all right well, the keys on so let's just go ahead and clear all the codes and then we'll we'll rescan it see what we come back up with maybe there's some other underlying condition but I think we're about 10 steps further ahead than we were because it runs yeah, let's do a another code scan Engine codes one. Oh, it's probably, yeah, I was gonna say probably P1000. Yep, oh, look at that. No more codes than anything except the uh, engine and training, which we've learned that are the same exact module on this monster. It runs now. Let me, I didn't hook the hose up, I came over here in a big hurry. So let me go hook the hose up, and we'll fire this little guy up. That's gonna do it for me. This was a pretty easy fix, I think. We come across a problem pretty quick with some pretty easy thinking, I think, or just a pretty pretty straightforward logical diagnostic approach. Um, 
I don't know what your guys' thoughts are, what your approach would have been, whether you would have jumped right in and, and uh, you know, just kind of tackled that, you know, zoomed in your focus on the, on the, on the uh, high-speed can there and gone to jump to that, see if any modules were shorted or whatever. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it's, it's pretty tough for me working on so many different makes and models to really have a, you know, just kind of a set pattern or just know how to jump in and test this particular vehicle. Um, I mean, they all, they're all just so different. I work on, you know, everything from the 1990s to today, <laughs> you know, so it's hard to, to know everything. So sometimes to have a very common sense, logical, you know, very elementary beginning approach to diagnostics has really, I think, helped me a lot in the sense that, well, we look at it, let's see what's working, what's not. Let's just check the basics on that module. Then, you know, kind of come over and do a little more research or a little more reading to see, you know, how this works, what it takes to generate this code, and then kind of, you know, trace it down from there. Um, but I have found that, you know, quite often, I mean, you've seen how it was. Yeah, we got an expensive scan tool. We could, we could look at all these different modules. And yeah, that's helpful. I'm not going to discount the fact that, uh, you know, that, that is helpful. Did it tell us what's wrong with it? No, not really. Um, you know, it's great having, you know, repair information that we can look at. We can look at wiring diagrams. We can, you know, kind of chase down our thought process. And that's, and that's good. I mean, I'm not going to say that. Uh, you know, it's all up here, you know, which it's not. I mean, it's it's the information that I have at my disposal, uh, you know, which I'm grateful for. Uh, but in the end, you know, we didn't need a real expensive scope to, to chase it down. We just needed the information to start with. Uh, so I guess I'll leave it at that. I hope it all made sense. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've got no idea what it's going to look like. Uh, it's not usually my habit to, you know, kind of grab the camera and peel it along, but... I just wanted to show you what I was seeing, but that fuse box is in a heck of a spot. Who knows, you know, did it cause the, uh, you know, being that close to the floor? You know, why did this corrode, but none of the other fuses or other relays did? Uh, you know, something manufacturing, did this uh, get a little moisture in it when it was over being made in whatever country it was being made in? You know, I don't know, truck's in 06, so, uh, so it was eight years old. Um, Nine. I can't even do math. <laughs> so we got, you know, we got a nine-year-old truck. I don't know. Who knows? You see the fuse box was, you know, the covers broke on it. So maybe people had these in and out. Maybe it laid on the floor where they did some other work. I don't know. It's all just a big guessing game. But at any rate, I'm going to write a bill up for this guy. He's going to be tickled to death, I think, to know that it got fixed. And it got fixed pretty fast. And it's going to get fixed pretty cheap. I don't know what the relay costs, but my labor time wasn't much. Probably spent more time screwing around with this video than I did actually fixing the truck. So, uh, anyhow, viewers, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But please let us know why. Let us know what you want to see different or what we could do better. And uh, check us out on Facebook. You want to connect with us socially, make sure you go there and like us. We're at almost 500 likes on Facebook. It's pretty cool. 3,100 and some odd subscribers and growing by the day. And we owe that all to you. And uh, just thank you for your donations and all your likes and everything you give us. All your gifts, your hats, and your jelly. <laughs> so just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.